topic of development, officially known as the changing economic world topic, the first topic in paper two. Please take some time to write down the date, title and learning objective. Obviously the date will be different depending on when you watch this video. Okay, you excited? I am, I always am. Let's go, let's get ready to learn. If you're one of my students or you're in the school that I teach in, then you will be given one of these sheets to revise from. So take the time now to uh, go, come and to write down in your diary or send me an email based on one of these sheets so I can give it to you the next time I see you. Okay, please write one to 10 in your books or on a sheet and try to complete these questions from memory. Go for it. I would strongly suggest you pause the video now so that you can answer the questions. Okay, the answers. Take a green pen. Earthquakes, volcanoes, and tropical storms are all types of natural hazard. Number two, the chance people will be affected by a natural hazard is called hazard risk. Number three, distribution means how something is spread out across an area. For example, earthquakes are distributed along the plate boundaries of the world. Most of them are. Number four, climate change is the long-term change in the global climate patterns. So the patterns of temperature and rainfall around the world. Five, rain, hail, snow, and sleet are all examples of precipitation. Remember that word, it's important. It comes up in the exam a lot. Number six, mitigation means preventing something bad from happening. For example, climate change or making it less bad. Number seven, the Somerset Levels floods in 2014 flooded 600 homes and 14,000 hectares of farmland. Make sure you learn some of these facts. Number eight. The HIC earthquake we studied happened in Chile, if you remember an HIC, in 2010. Chile is in South America. Number nine. The Philippines was affected by which tropical storm in November 2013? It was Typhoon Haiyan. And finally, number ten. Planting trees in areas where there used to be no trees is called afforestation. Please give yourselves a mark out of 10. If you scored fewer than 8 out of 10, then write down the questions and their answers and test yourselves on them by putting them on Quizlet or on flashcards, but make sure that you learn them or watch the video again and test yourself again. Okay, let's get started. Can you read this? If you can, think about why you can, because in fact, you are lucky. There are more than a billion people around the world, your age and similar ages, who would not be able to read, th read this. What does that tell you about the countries they live in? What does, that, what does that tell you about the opportunities that they don't have that you have? And what does that tell you about the chances of success in their life compared to your own? Why does the ability to read affect your life? And why are some people your age or older than you less likely to be able to read? What is going wrong in those countries? The topic of development is all about this question. Why is it that some people's lives are more difficult than others, that some people have fewer opportunities and skills than others? in some countries around the world. You're going to learn the answer to three questions throughout this topic. Number one, why are some countries less developed than others? Why are their lives more difficult? Number two, what can we do about it? And number three, let's look at an example of a country that is developing to find out why it is only just now developing and what could be done to help it catch up with the rest of the very developed world. Okay, let's get ready to rumble. So the big question today is what is development? Here is London. It's 1856. It's a year known as the Big Stink. Smell wafts across the city. A man walks out of his house and he's hit by a wall of smell. It floats through his nose and he just can't bear it. But then he looks down the street and he looks up the street and he sees people are holding their noses just the same. And he looks across the street and he sees huge piles of garbage building up. And he sees 
the trail of sewage going along the pipes that are on the surface of the street. It's a pretty unpleasant situation and a fairly unpleasant life to be living. This was London in the 1800s. At about that time, that man walked out of his house and he went to the public water fountain in the middle of the square. He turned on the tap and water poured out and he drank from it. All was well. But when he went home, he felt his stomach was not quite right. He thought not much of it. He went to sleep. He woke up a few hours later with a terrible fever and unbearable pain in the stomach. He was rushed to the nearest hospital, but they didn't know what was going on. At this point, they had no idea what could have caused this. That man tragically died three days later from dehydration. He was not the only one. More than 1,400 people died from the outbreak of a disease called cholera in this year in London. Cholera is a bacteria that is spread throughout dirty water. And it happened because in these years, in the 1800s in London, the running water that people used to drink would often be contaminated by sewage, which was not in its own pipes. Sewage is the wastewater that comes from people's homes. And this meant that people's lives were much less healthy. People died much more often and much younger than they should have. This was the level of development of London in the 1800s. Much lower, I'm sure you'll agree, in terms of health than it is now. The government realised this was a big problem, so they recruited this man, Edwin Chadwick, to come and help them. He said, well, what if the problem is the water? He noticed that the people who were dying were the ones that were nearest this contaminated water, the ones that were drinking from these water spots. So he mapped it and he found out that it was the sewage leaking into the clean water supply that was causing people to get ill. So he gave two pieces of advice. Number one, he said, let's make sure every house has its own toilet with a pipe going out of the toilet so that the waste is separated. Number two, he said, let's make sure we build proper sewers underground and completely separate from the water supply so that people don't get ill from contaminated water anymore. These sewers today look like this. 150 years later and life in London is very different. People never get ill from dirty water. The smell, while not exactly rose petals and lavender, is certainly much more bearable in London. And it's one of the healthiest cities in the world. People live mostly long, healthy lives. This is the story of development, the improvement in the health and quality of life of people. It happened in England, and it's happening around the world. This is called social development, the improvement in people's quality of life, their health, their education, how they feel about their lives. So that's one type of development. Second type. This is China, 1970. Desperate state of poverty. People living in tiny cramped homes with their kids, emaciated, very hungry. Very few people had good jobs. They worked mostly as farmers, but to grow food, they struggled to grow food. It was a terrible, terrible time in 1970 in China because they just emerged from something called a famine, where there was no food. 40 million people died in a few years in this famine in China because of starvation. In 1976, a new president came along who decided he needed to change that. There was a, new, a better way. And he, so he got the government to spend money on two very important things. He said, right, let's spend money on education. Let's train our people up. So he built lots of schools and he paid for the training for lots of teachers. And he also said, let's make sure that people have access to good jobs where they can have a good income. And then we can sell products around the world so that China gets richer and people will be able to afford better homes and better food and better med medical supplies. So the government invested in factories and manufacturing. Today, far more people in China live like this. They have books in their homes suggesting they can read. They have clean clothes and nice sofas. They have space in their homes. They're happy. They're healthy. They're going to go on to live successful lives. Far more people live like this in China now. 
Some people, in fact, in China are so rich that they live like this. This is the flaunt your wealth challenge on Instagram in China. This woman is not dead. Nope. She's merely showing off her expensive clothes and jewelry and Ferrari in the background. This is China's development story. It's called economic development. People getting richer. So what is development? I would suggest you write down this keyword and the definition now. Development is a long-term improvement in people's quality of life, how they feel, and their standard of living, how much money they have. So if you're not quite sure or you'd like to test your understanding of development, I strongly suggest you try and answer these questions now. I'm going to go through the answers. The question, the way you need to answer these questions is, yes, it is development. No, it isn't. You see these statements? Yes, it is development. No, it isn't. So number one, yes, it is. Life is getting better. Number two, yes, it is. Life is getting better. Number three, no, it isn't. They've reduced the number of buses so people's quality of life has got worse. Number four, yes, it is. Life is getting better. Number five, yes, it is. Life is getting better. Number six, again, many more people are out of poverty. So yes, it is. And number seven, people survive a disease called Ebola and they return to work four weeks after going to the hospital. No, it isn't. Life has not got better. The government has not done anything to improve people's lives. So how do we measure development? I'm telling you that some countries are less developed than others. I told you that China was less developed than in the past than it is now. So how do we measure it? Well, the first thing we can measure about development is about how much money people make. It's called an economic measure of development. This lady and the other people around her are collecting valuable items from a garbage tip in the country called Ivory Coast here in West Africa. Whereas this gentleman has just received a bonus for his job as a banker in Barclays Bank in London. This gentleman got a bonus of two million pounds for one year of work. He makes many millions every year. These people here in Ivory Coast would be lucky if they make two dollars every day. The measure of development that tells you the average amount people make in a, in a country in a year is called GDP per capita. It stands for Gross Domestic Product Per Capita and it tells you the amount of money that one person makes on average in one year. In an HIC like the UK, the GDP per capita is high. In an LIC like the Ivory Coast, the GDP per capita is low. So one measure of development is economic, it tells you how much money people make. There are also social measures, telling you how good the lives of people are in a country. For example, in Japan, People live to a very old age. They're extremely healthy. They have exercise every day. They have good diets and the hospitals are excellent. As a result, they live long lives. People can expect to live long lives in Japan. This measure is called life expectancy. And it's the average expected life span of people from birth. In Japan, currently, it's about 86 years. Second social measure. This girl and the other girls around her can read. The percent of people in a country that can read is called the literacy rate. L-I-T-E-R-A-C-Y. Literacy rate. And it tells you how good the education is. And as a result, it tells you whether people will be able to get high paid jobs. This measure tells you another indicator of quality of life, and this is the infant mortality. The number of babies per thousand that die before their fifth birthday. It's a very important indicator of the health of the population and the quality of health care. These three social measures, along with this economic measure, give you a picture of how developed a country is. Now, if you have a whiteboard, feel free to use it. If you just have uh, an exercise book, then feel free to answer these questions. So question one. In your own words, what is development? Take some time. Pause the video. So development is about an improvement over a long time in people's quality of life and their standard of living. That's development. Question two. Give me one way you could tell that China is now more developed than it was in the past. So you should have said uh, people are richer, 
They're healthier, they're more educated, they have better paid jobs, they look happier, they're less likely to be hungry. There are many different things that you can tell. Question three. Give me two social measures of development. So you could have said literacy rate, or life expectancy, or infant mortality. What measure of development tells you the average income one person makes in one year in a country? You should have said GDP per capita. Check whether you understood these questions. If not, watch the video again, go over your notes again, test yourself. Now try and attempt these questions by yourselves. Write the questions out in your books. Attempt to answer them. Feel free to look through your notes. Pause the video and then go through the answers in green, giving yourself a mark. Here are the answers. So the literacy rate and GDP per capita. That would be one mark for each of those points. And then question two, what do these indicators tell you about the life of people in a country? Check out these answers. Make sure you explain the importance of each of these measures and what it tells you about how good people's lives are in a country. Okay, to review. You want to make sure the learning sticks. So I want you from memory to write three questions based on today's lesson. And then from memory again, I want you to answer these questions. If you can't answer them, go back to find the answers. And then regardless of whether you can or can't answer them, I expect you to test yourselves on them in the future so that you may embed the learning of today's lesson into your memory. Thank you for the excellent lesson. Thank you for paying attention. Feel free to listen to the lesson as many times as you need to to ensure that you really learn and understand these ideas. I'll see you again for lesson two.